Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back talking about somewhat sensitive subject. And yes, if you read the headline talking about the Skyway Fishing Pier potentially being shut down for fishing, I, I understand the irony is the word fishing pier is in there for really one main reason, and that is birds. And this podcast, I'm going to go right off the bat and say this is not about you know, poking either party or trying to say we're right, they're right, meaning the the friends of pelicans and birds. This is about really about education. This whole thing has happened because of really some sloppiness on the part of a lot of anglers. There's also some other issues that we'll talk about in, in terms of the birds. But end of the day, if you take everything back to kind of where it started, it's from a lot of fishermen especially some beginner fishermen, which we love to help. And we got Captain Dylan on here who loves to help because obviously when people are fishing and enjoying it and having fun, they want to do it more. They tell their friends about it, they get their families and they're hiring Hubbard's Marina. They're joining Salt Strong. It helps everyone. But at the same point, we have to protect our everything from our landmarks to our fishing piers, to the birds, to the manatees, to everything in the, in the water. Um, and we've seen some pretty bad things out there from people cutting lines. Dylan gets to see it there in John's Pass sometimes when someone hooks a bird and cuts a line. I mean, that that's basically just giving it a, a death sentence uh, for the most part. So there's a lot of things never to do. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to pull up a couple of little PDFs that FWC has put together on the right way to do it, because it will happen. If you fish enough, you will at some point hook a bird, regardless if it's a pelican or not. But a lot of this is happening on places like the Skyway Fishing Pier, which is why it's getting a lot of attention. And there are some really amazing people out there. I've watched quite a few videos here this morning that are giving their time, like they're not paid to do this, they're volunteering to go save the pelicans that fishermen are hooking. So we have to, like, we have to be mindful of that and we have to open our eyes to that and say, all right, there, there really is a problem here. Let's all work together. If you guys are watching, I'm doing it together thing. Uh, you know, let's all work together to make this uh, this work. Cause, and I don't, I don't think the, for the most part, the, the, the bird side of this, like, I don't think they just came in day one and said, hey, let's end fishing once and for all. It was just after seeing so many birds die over and over again and so many birds getting hurt and mistreated and, and in some cases tortured uh, that, that this come to this. So this is all about starting day one, having an open conversation, talking about education. We got Captain Dylan, as I said, we got Justin, who's got all kinds of background in, uh, in, uh, in the marine life. And we got Luke, who uh, who just loves fishing and avoiding hooking birds in, in general. So, guys, welcome. Dylan, you're the one that really called me and and brought this to my attention of that it's it's getting to the point now where we have some people, in particular the the pelic some of the pelican groups that are so fired up about what has happened with fishing and, and pelicans that they you know that they're trying to get these skyway fishing piers shut down for fishing so kind of talk about what's happened and how the heck did we even get here yeah and that's my big concern is we've seen over the last 10 years five ten years the gradual decrease in fishing access at a variety of locations uh and we constantly see even in John's Pass, we had a, a bridge there that had a catwalk for fishermen. It was a dedicated place for fishermen to fish. They build a new bridge and that catwalk is gone. And now there's all these signs, no fishing from the bridge between signs. And we see all throughout the area, uh, less access to fishing areas for fishermen in general. And we have a huge problem in the area with the number of uh, or lack of number of boat ramps. And uh, it really concerns me when I see anything like this sort of situation come about that might threaten fishing access, especially in areas that are so popular in destinations for fishing. I mean, not only the Skyway Fishing Pier, but some of the problem areas that are being discussed and really brought a lot of attention to or negative light to Fort Soto Fishing Pier, Big Pier 60, Dunedin Causeway. There's a lot of areas that are popular for local fishermen that are in danger right now because of this uh, ongoing issue uh, of lack of education on the part of anglers. And uh, like you said, there's other uh, 
issues uh, extenuating beyond that, but really it comes down to fishermen and what we've allowed to have happen. And uh, that is photos, photo opportunities of birds hung from trees and captured in trees from trailing fishing lines. And we've all seen it out there on the water. It's inevitable that occasionally you might hook a bird, but when you hook a bird, don't cut the line, reel the bird in, get that hook out of it, get, get it cleared out and release it. Don't leave trailing line. And if you hook a, uh, what I see a lot as well at our dock is someone casts from the beach over and trying to fish the dock and they get their lure stuck. Instead of trying to get that lure freed, they just cut the line at the rod tip. You don't have a bird. There was no bird involved, but now you have 50 yards of monofilament floating in the water or worse yet braid and uh, a bird will get entangled in that and then all of a sudden they're lassoed to the dock and uh, they can't get away and eventually have a slow death so if you hook a bird you got to reel it in don't cut the line if you hook a dock or hook a bridge while you're fishing you can't just cut the line you got to try to get that lure free and if you can't get the lure free try to break it and most of the time uh, you're not at the hook or you're not at the terminal tackle is the weak point of the line uh, hopefully at least if you're maintaining your tackle properly and that's where it'll break if you use the proper technique and then you don't have trailing lines and if we made sure that there wasn't any trailing line hanging from docks piers bridges or famous fishing areas we wouldn't have photo ops with birds hanging from trees and we wouldn't be having the conversation that we're having today and that's yeah. what it comes down to. And I, I saw one too in, in just a mangrove tree. And we've seen it before. Uh, you know, there's that tree, Luke, right there when you leave the Gasparilla Marina that, you know, where we've been fishing our whole lives that has all those pelicans there. And, and, and there is some good fishing right around. There's some nice snook. And sometimes you'll see people leave all this line in there. And there's one pretty gruesome picture that's on a, one of the PDFs that will show where it's a pelican hanging what looks like to be dead from a mangrove tree just it literally is just completely discombobulated and and just probably just died of starvation from someone who left all their line there and luke you know i mean you're the not expert they're they're really to your point dylan should never be a time that if you do break off properly that it's not going to break right there at the at the very end of the lure or hook or maybe at the where the leader meets the braid unless you're tying the fg knot that'll never happen right luke yeah, there's there's no excuse. There's really no excuse to leave line in the water, as as mentioned, right? Ideally, get it get it back from a pylon or from whatever. You can usually do that by just going up to it and going on the other side of it, even on a even on a rock. But worst case, if you if you can't get it off, you just grab the spool and pull back, and eventually the knot will break. It'll be like ninety nine percent plus of the time the knot will break. That way, you get all of your line back. First of all, you get all your line back, so you don't have to go load more line. Secondly, we're not leaving a bunch of line out in the out in the environment. Yeah, it's it's just a, a huge, I think, responsibility and education piece that we all need to continue to hammer home. And it's something we all kind of overlook. It's not something you think about when preparing from a trip. I mean, you hop on your your new salt strong fishing app and you find your your oyster bar or your grass flat or your mangrove shoreline and you look at your tides and your weather and all the other good stuff. But you don't really think about at the top of your list of what do you do when you hook a bird? And we all need to start considering proliferating that to other anglers and making sure that we're talking about it so people know what to do when they run into these situations because it's our responsibility to make sure everybody out there is behaving in the best possible way it's most of the time you've seen it at docks and bridges uh where fishing is closed in those areas because what people leave trash behind or they throw a cast net and leave a bunch of grass on the dock people get upset and they close fishing and that lack of fishing access is what we're potentially facing because of this line being left behind. And I, I've seen it more and more nowadays where it's kind of like uh, this kind of group culture of, oh, you're being a messy fisherman. You got to clean up behind yourselves. And the peer pressure has really caused people to be more careful about that. And I see it more often where you don't have those messy fishermen anymore. That's something that kind of is taught or it's a culture that we've created, which is awesome, but we need to do the same thing with this, uh, this 
line left in the water and making sure we're not cutting the line if we do hook a bird. Yep. And so I've, I've got this PowerPoint from FWC pulled up and this was back in 2016. Dylan mentioned some of these kind of hot spots, and this is all about where they were having issues with pelicans. You know, there's that one I was talking about. There was pelican dangling upside down. Uh, there's a definitely a deceased pelican there. But we're talking about a lot of bridges and parks. And, and to me, you mentioned earlier, Dylan, I mean, we have a brother with cerebral palsy in a wheelchair, right? He, it's really tough for him to get out in a boat. What's cool about these piers, it's it's accessible to anyone, right? People with wheelchairs can get out there. You don't have to have all the fancy stuff. You can literally drop a line right off the rail. This is the, one of the best ways to get people into fishing in the first place. But as we've been saying over and over again, we have to start talking a little bit more about conservation and just being good people, right? Being good stewards to everything, both the water, the birds that live in it, the fish that live in it, the dolphin. I mean, everything that's in there. Or if you see one of these big ones getting shut down, guess what's going to happen? That's going to give precedent now, right? In the legal terms to go after every single other one out there anytime there is an issue. So, I mean, this is this is definitely a uh, an alarming call for all anglers to make sure that we're doing the right thing, even calling people out, not, not, not to, to call them an idiot or anything, but calling people out and educating them when we see things that aren't right. If you see someone ever cutting their line like that, uh, just to let them know the right way to do it and then why. And we'll also talk about the right way to de-hook uh, any kind of bird, but pelicans is one of the main ones they do on here because there is a right way and a wrong way. So Justin, you've been real quiet. I know you're dying to say something because you're a, a, a lover of birds and fish. Uh, what what you say? So a lot of this has stemmed from just an unintentional behavior of birds. I mean, fishermen fish where the fish are. A lot of the bait tends to congregate around these, these piers and these uh, land-based areas and throughout different times of the year birds will naturally feed on a lot of the bait fish nearby accidentally get caught you know when someone's casting their line or dive down and try to feed on the bait offering or the bait that's nearby the pier um, and I think sometimes you know even even at boat ramps for example Dylan I'm sure you've seen this before people are releasing their live bait or you know the the birds end up kind of corresponding and knowing that anglers might be associated with providing food and it's completely unintentional a lot of these issues that are arising, they were, none of it was intentional behavior. Nobody ever wanted to train or to associate this friendly relationship with birds. All of this ends up being accidental or incidental. And um, I think, like you guys are mentioning, people have goodwill. Everybody wants to do the right thing. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are just nervous or, or scared because they don't know what steps go along with handling a you know pretty formidable wild animal so to speak we don't know the right way to be able to grab the beak or to contain the bird so we're not causing it stress or putting ourselves at, at risk i think the impulse response for anglers and people is i don't want to get bit but the reality is that just like with anything in life if you've never done it before it can be a little scary but you do it once or you get educated on the matter of how to handle the situation and a lot of that fear goes away you know it, it you just have to know what the process looks like. And I know you've got this pulled up right now. We'll kind of go through the process of what, what you can do literally step-by-step step. like, Hey, this has been the proven method to handle a bird. Um, if the, if the event occurs and it does get tangled somehow, but um, there's also another thing we should point out. I think there's an entirely dedicated phone line to call someone if you need assistance. Yeah. Like if you're just nervous and you don't know how to do it, you, there's people on call to say, Hey, uh, I'm at this, I'm at step three and I don't know if I'm capable of handling, grabbing the beak and getting the hook out of the line out. Someone will come to your help in general. Good Samaritans will probably want to help you nearby because you'll be near other people. But if you needed that help, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that. There's a hotline dedicated to that as well. Yeah. And, and on this page, this is the FWC page. There's 10 steps. Half of them are just redundant. Like enlist Enlist others for assistance if possible. Wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. Those are two of the steps already. So you're already halfway there if you can just read 10 steps. But the, the big one is, and, and this is something that I've personally seen done the wrong way, this is step number two, is reel the bird in slowly and evenly. Justin, you made a good point. A lot of people are nervous. I get nervous if I hook the bird. You just, you, don't, you assume the worst that the thing's going to, it's mad, it's going to attack you. And 
every case I've seen though, if you reel it in nice and slow where you're not trying to like, t I mean, you're clearly not going to be able to just pop the hook out of a bird. Don't ever try to set the hook or yank back. But normally these birds, they know they're hooked, right? The, and they know you're trying to help them if you're doing it nice and slow and you're bringing in nice and calm and not not being obnoxious and, and acting scared. In most all cases, they will come in mostly calm once you kind of calm them down. Uh, let's see. So that's number one is don't ever try to like shake it loose or try to like pop it off uh, like you would trying to get your lure out of a mangrove tree. Uh, it will do the exact opposite and go in uh, any deeper and, and obviously cause even more damage to uh, to the bird. But it's this firm and glass is really step number five is where you kind of start. So grasp the bird be, uh, bird's head behind the eyes, fold the wings up gently but firmly against the bird's body so that it cannot flap its wings and hold the legs. Hold firmly, but do not strangle the bird. If it's a pelican, you can hold the beak, but keep that beak slightly open. You'll see a lot of people who put just like one finger in there. If you have, even if without gloves, you're fine. But if you have gloves, you can put a finger in there to make sure that it can still breathe. And then cover the bird's head with a towel, shirt, something that you got there on the boat. This will calm it down pretty much automatically when you, when you do that. And then remove the hook. Uh, it talks about, you know, cutting the barb. Uh, certainly if it's in that deep, yes, you need to do that. Many times just like, just releasing a, a, a fish. If you can get it out quickly, then then do it. But if it is in deep and you happen to have some type of water wire cutters or uh, or anything that can cut, you know, a, a hook, then use those. And uh, if you see anything else on the bird, right? Because a lot of times they might have another hook in them or some line. Obviously, get all of that out. Check it uh, all over the place and then release it, assuming that it's uh, it's ready to go. And make sure the head is pointed to towards the water. And, uh, and let it go on its own. Don't ever throw the thing out and don't kick it out. Uh, treat it just like you would if it was one of your pets. Uh, we got to treat it with, uh, with love. And in most cases, I've seen, they usually just do fly right off. But your point, Justin, there is a hotline. There's all kinds of volunteers who are really, really passionate about this. And uh, at, a, at a moment's notice will come wherever you are, especially if you're on uh, a state pier. There's usually someone there, honestly, uh, at most normal business hours and certainly on the weekends. Uh, what, what else do you see, Dylan, on, because I, I know you guys have, you know, you have tourists, you have a lot of beginners. Uh, what else have you seen around your docks and around St. John's? Yeah, I mean, one St. thing St. that I pass. wanted to, yeah, I, I understand. I've heard <laughs> all the worst, but uh, one thing that's always comical to me is like people, and even myself, like you said, you get stressed out when you hook a bird. You don't want to hook a bird, uh, but it's comical to me because it's like we deal with things like mackerel sharps teeth sharp teeth all the time or sharks and uh yeah we reel one of those up and grab it without even thinking or taking a second thought whereas like oh you hook a pelican it's like oh no but uh i mean the biggest thing that you want to remember is removing as much line or all the line as possible and people really get kind of tied up in the fact that oh i can't get this this hook out and i've seen it at the dock sometimes uh where you get to a point where you're causing more injury to the bird trying to remove the hook because it's in a weird spot or something like that you can always just hold on to the bird and make one of those phone calls we actually have two different cages at our dock uh for that reason like the other day we had a, a guest uh not a guest of ours but someone locally fishing on the beach who had hooked a pelican in the pouch and it had actually torn a lot of the pouch and that pouch area is so soft and and kind of fragile trying to unhook it was causing more damage than anything so we were in a position to cage the bird and then contact uh volunteers who actually came out and brought the bird back to a rehab rehabilitation facility to get that hook removed more easily and then also rehab the bird since it had a torn pouch and some injuries there um so just remembering that you the goal is to get as much of that line off as possible and stay calm was the biggest thing that joe i think said 
uh, and, and birds can sense that as well. And we see that all the time. You see a, a young kid out there fishing for the first time, especially over the summer, there's more young anglers out in the dock and they're trying to drop a pelican in for one of those snook and, uh, or trying to drop a pinfish, sorry, in for one of those snook and a pelican comes out from under the dock and swipes that pinfish. Then all of a sudden you run into that situation and the initial thought or reaction is trying to pull the bait away from the bird. But a lot of times that's just going to cause that hook set essentially and uh, cause damage. So you just want to stay calm, stay deliberate. And uh, then once you get the bird to you, trying to keep control over the bird, because another incident that can happen is if you're not securing those wings and allowing that bird to start flapping its wings, it can really cause a lot of damage to the bird. If you're holding onto the bill, it can stretch out his neck or hurt its neck or damage its neck, and then it can damage the wings. So you really want to try to make sure that you're kind of calm and deliberate, getting control of that beak. And then as soon as you have control of the beak, slowly gain control of the wings and make sure he's chilled out and then cover those eyes. And it's really easy process from there. Um, but you got to remember as well that when you're fishing one of these locations like Skyway Fishing Pier, Dunedin, Causeway, uh, the Fort DeSoto Piers, there's people out there that pier fish a lot. And those people are generally more than happy to come over and try to help. So I mean, you got to remember that there is going to be people around you. There's phone numbers you can call. So stay calm. Don't cut the line and uh, just try to get help from people around you. And if you can try to contain the bird, if it does need rehabilitation and contact the appropriate channels, all the phone numbers are right there on the FWC's website uh, that I'm sure the Salt Strong guys will do a great job of passing along to you all. And the FWC reporting hotline number is really easy uh, to Google as well. If you're out there fishing and you're like, man, what was that phone number on the Salt Strong site? It's just FWC reporting hotline. You can Google it. It pops up in a second. And that's for if you see, if you're out fishing, you see a dolphin with injuries, you see manatees, you see anything at all out of the ordinary or someone disobeying the law, someone keeping something out of season or too small all the same phone number they make it really really easy so uh, fwc reporting hotline definitely think about saving that in your phone and uh, that's about all i got <laughs> it, when and justin you you touched on this earlier that some of it has been incidental over the years and that's you know feeding these birds like any wild animal right same reason you don't feed alligators and you have to tell a tourist hey don't feed the gators it it it, it this that has long-term repercussions that could kill someone when a gator associates food with humans and right here, even on this PDF, it says if you caught too much too much bait, if you have too much bait fish, throw them back for next time. Don't feed them birds. And that happens a lot. We see it, right? Coming back to the docks and someone's got too much bait and they're just sitting there chunking at the birds. Uh, and sometimes it's, you know, it is tourists that, you know, are just feeding birds in general, crackers or whatever it is. Just make a point to never, ever do that. One of the rules that they did institute, I, I believe right now it's on the Skyway and in and, and some other peers as well is putting it down to three rods max, right? Because you know, there were some people that are going out there with you know 10 rods and them spaced out everywhere and using live bait. And, and that is a, can be a recipe for disaster from not just from the live bait and the pelicans hitting it, but running into all those different lines. Uh, so that is one thing. And if you do have bait, make sure you close the top, right? If you have it enclosed, which most of you do, uh, or if it's in a big old bucket, put some type of top on it so the pelicans can't get there. If you're cleaning fish, don't just sit there and purposely throw the food and the scraps to the pelicans. Uh, all that is doing is training them to come in closer and being more and more aggressive because there are some of these pelicans that are crazy aggressive. I've seen it in places like Hubbard's before in the past, right? And it's not like Hubbard's is sitting there feeding and they know what to do, but people in the past have done something to these pelicans that are ingrained, hey, I'm going to go there and just get a free, a free meal. And if they don't, those suckers get aggressive, like like to the point. I don't want to be around some of these uh, these pelicans. Once again, not their fault. We we've done this as humans over the years and years and years. So it's really really important not to feed these things. Uh, it's just like gators or uh, sandhill cranes or anything out there, you just don't feed them. Uh, it, it does a horrible horrible thing in the long term. You got to remember um, as well. Yeah. It's a felony. It's a felony to purposefully feed a seabird. So you got to keep in mind when you're out there that it's perception. I mean, you could, 
you could be argued that you leaving your bait bucket on a pier without a lid is feeding the birds. I mean, you got to think about uh, whoever watches that or records that and what some logical person could potentially charge you with later. Uh, so you've got to remember that when you're out there fishing uh, and tossing fish back. I mean, you brought up filleting fish. It is, again, a felony. If you were to toss a carcass over and a bird grabs it, potentially that could be construed as feeding the birds or feeding a seabird, which is a, a type of felony. So you really got to be super cautious. And as far as uh, the aggressiveness of birds, keep in mind, we're, we're in August right now, but in a few months, we're going to start getting into that time of year where bait fish get deeper in the water. Bait fish get deeper in the water in those cooler months. There's less of them around. And what happens? The aggressiveness level of brown pelicans and almost all seabirds exponentially increases. I mean, in the wintertime, we have our crew has to wear special gloves when they're filleting fish because we'll get a crowd of pelicans on the dock so aggressive that they'll actually start biting our crew members' feet, arms, legs uh, while we're filleting fish, trying to get us uh, to drop a carcass or to drop a, a, a any sort of scrap uh, because we're so careful at making sure none of that goes to the birds. So it really becomes something even more important to watch out for as we get into these cooler months as well. Man. Yeah, Luke, well, is this I mean, is this why you use lures now? You know, no Luke doesn't like live bait. Is this no more having to worry about the pelicans getting it? No, it's just an added benefit. Uh, I, I rarely have issues with birds. And, and when I do, it's almost always a bird flying into the line. And and the same same tips apply. And no, at no <laughs> point should you ever jerk back trying to like free the line from the bird. Because worst case, or most likely, that's just gonna set the hook in the bird so when I, whenever i have a bird issue it's almost always flying into the line to do the exact same steps reeled in slowly and calmly they don't the birds don't weigh much at all so it's not like they're going to be fighting line there's there should be no case where a bird breaks your line so just reeled in nice and slow get control over it calm it down untangle it and the thing will fly right off and you're back to fishing so um, it used to be something i would really just freak out about because it is intimidating the first time it obviously happened when I was a kid and got help from, uh, from, from pops. But, uh, but if you do see somebody hooking a bird, odds are they're probably freaking out. So go over there and help them out. Go just show, show them how to do it. Best way to teach is to actually do it in real life and they'll be able to see how easy it is. And then they'll do it the next time. And, and hopefully others around the pier will come watch because uh, it's super easy to do. The biggest thing is just don't freak out and just, just, just take care of the bird. It's, it's really simple. Um, I think the biggest hurdle is just people just getting nervous and uh, getting like embarrassed that they have a, a bird on. If I sniff the line real quick, like that's the worst thing to do. It happens. It doesn't happen very often, fortunately, but when it does, we just got to take, take an extra minute and take care of the bird and, and then everybody's happy. So uh, it's a really easy thing. It's an easy problem to solve. It really comes down to education. That's why I, I personally don't think that closing a pier is any solution because people who want to fish are going to fish and it's just going to move the problem from one pier to the next pier or, or from one location to to another. So it really comes down to education and uh, we need to do, you know, podcasts like this, but a lot of it's just in person, right? If you're out there, see somebody struggling with the bird, go over there and help. That should be the first thing you do. And that way they'll know what to do if, in case they don't. And eventually everybody will know how to do it. I knew there's a reason we had you on this podcast today. That was the, that was the best line. That was it good changing the culture and uh that yeah. peer pressure and uh helping each other out is the, the the goal and uh it comes down to you out there on a pier being the expert angler oh yeah i don't hook birds i'm not part of the problem well you're part of the problem if you're sitting there watching the new guy down the pier from you or the new girl or the lady taking her kids out fishing or what whatever the situation is watching them struggle and not offering assistance you are part of the problem so yeah great point Luke. That's good. Yeah. And, and even on the line too, I, I see a lot in social media, it drives me crazy where somebody's fishing and either from boat pier or whatever, and they get spooled, right? They hook into a big fish that's too big for their tackle. And then the fish takes all their line out because they can't stop it. That's the worst thing. Like that's totally on the angler to never let that happen. If you see that you're out gunned, it happens. Hooking into a tarpon while trout fishing, you're not going to land that tarpon. So just grab the spool. And just like when you're hooked onto the bottom, or to a dock piling, 
grab the spool. Eventually, the weakest point is going to break. It'll almost always be right at the hook. That way, you get all your line back, and you don't have 200 yards of line out in the out in the water. But that's that frustrates me forever so much. And and almost like bragging, oh, I just got spooled today for the sixth time. Like uh, it's like that's that's not good. Like that's not going to be brag about. It. And and it's not like they're trying to and like happy about. It. They just they just didn't know. So a lot of it, a lot of it just comes down to education. Yep. And so hopefully people share this type of message around so that that uh, we can just protect our waterways and our fisheries and our birds, right? Because we it's like it's not like we don't like any any of those those items. It's just taking care of what we're uh, what we're out there enjoying. Yeah, and, and and as as far as we were talking earlier about the lure issue, I've had birds dive on lures, and one of the worst situations I saw in John's Pass was one of those uh, floating uh, twitch baits where you cast it out, it's floating on the surface, you reel it in, it dives down a little bit. Not the best lure to use in a deep John's Pass, but uh, some <laughs> some people were out there on the beach. It was a father and son, and uh, they were in town on vacation. You could tell they were not super experienced saltwater fishermen. And they were using one of those classic style, like six inch hard baits with three treble hooks on it. Oh. Of course, it wasn't just two, there was three. And uh, they cast in the middle of the pass and I saw it happening. I was up on the boardwalk in a meeting and uh, I saw them cast the first time, Pelican kind of dives at it. And then they kind of move down a little bit and cast again, the same bird circles back and dives at it again. And then they cast it a third time. I was like, please don't do it. He did. And of course, on the third try, the Pelican got it. And that was exactly what happened. Uh, it was the son throwing the lure. The dad was a little bit ways away, not really watching. Then son immediately starts freaking out as the bird's flying away with the lure in his mouth, tries to set the hook. Of course, uh, wrong situation, but it's a young angler. You can't really fault the, the young guy for freaking out a little bit. And uh, so then the pelican's trying to fly away and he opens the bale. And this bird proceeds to fly 150 yards towards the mangrove shoreline or the mangrove islands inside John's Pass. And I'm watching this unfold. I'm like, all right, I got to go. I got to go down there and help this, this young guy out. And uh, by the time I got there, he had almost been spooled uh, by this bird and finally got him to close this bale. At this point, dad's over there and dad's trying to reach the scissors up and cut the line at the rod tip. Oh. It was just uh, like all the things you don't want to do happening at once. And luckily there was a couple of people there. We were able to get them calmed down, close the bill. He finally retrieved the bird. Luckily the Pelican didn't land. Cause at this point he's so far away. If he would have landed, the line would have been tangled in multiple docks and there would have been no chance, but stayed up in the air, was able to get him back close and uh, get him unhooked and back, uh, back away. And uh, it was a, uh, it was a crazy situation, but that's just one of those memorable experiences that I have that it's not only just a, a dead bait situation or a live bait situation it's anything can happen out there and especially once it's cooler this was again winter time when bait is super less available and uh, those birds can get even aggressive and you're working that that moonwalker out in the flats early morning and you can get dove on even in that situation yeah, and, and pelicans too are the easiest. That's why it blows my mind that people are are scared of pelicans. They, yes, they are bigger, but they have that giant beak. And just grab the beak, and you and you have control over it. It's not going to hurt you. It's it's really again, it's about staying calm. And also, I'll, I'll say a tip that that has helped a lot is I always bring a towel with me. Um, first of all, in case it rains, whatever, just to have a dry, just to have some dry cloth is good. But if you do, you know, if you do hook a bird, if you see somebody hook a bird, it is so good to have a towel where you can put it over its head or over its whole body, especially if it's a small bird, and now they can't get you and it calms them down because they really don't know what's going on. It, it, it's, it shockingly calms them down. You can just control them, untangle the line, or if the hook's in it too, it rarely is the hook in it. My, in, in my experience, it's usually tangled around the line. Untangle it, the bird's good to go, but the, the towel is crucial. Um, pelicans are easiest. If there's little smaller birds, those little turns, they're pretty quick. So get, just get a towel, even a, a small, it doesn't have to be a giant beach towel, just something small, even a shirt, put it over it and you just grab it. It's not going to hurt you at all. And uh, and it's shockingly easy to, to, un, to undo it. So it's just a matter of just not freaking out. It's really the the, the key message here. Yeah. And my shirts are like beach towels. So it works out <laughs> for me. But uh, you're, you're not experiencing them being hooked as much, Luke, I would assume probably because you're lure fishing more. Whereas what we see on the dock is more dead bait, more live bait. So 
almost always the hook is actually in the bird. And in most cases, it's someone who doesn't know what they're doing per se when they do hook a bird. So it's a lot of outreach. And, and luckily, we're able to have staff virtually on the dock at all times to kind of monitor that um, because we're the last dock in John's Pass that allows fishing access. And that that alone is very sad, in my opinion, that it's the last place that you're able to access the fishery from. Uh, so it's really something that we work hard on to try to preserve access and open access. And uh, that's what we have to do is keep people out there to monitor, because that's the last thing I want is a video to surface from someone on the boardwalk watching a uh, kid trying to yank their lure out of the mouth of a pelican. And then all of a sudden it reflects badly on me and my company, but also forces us uh, forces the city's hand to kind of come down and say hey no more fishing in john's bass so definitely uh hits close to home this whole subject absolutely justin you want to bring us home dude i can tell you've got something good to say uh yeah you haven't but... used your five dollar word yet so we still no i don't think i have one for this one you know hmm. I, I want this to to really stay on topic here so the overarching theme of all this is education right? It's, it's about educating people. And I can't help but think, you know, for Salt Strong, for us, that's the core of everything that we do is educating fishermen where to find and catch fish. But we're all, we're all, you know, good citizens. And, and we love our resources. We want to help everybody. Our whole community platform, we answer questions from where to find and catch fish, how to rig and tie knots to even questions about what's in season, what can I keep, not keep. And it, I can't help but think, you know, there's people that go out and fish, people that fish anywhere, land-based, offshore, inshore in the bay. Everyone gets a fishing license, but there isn't really a lot of, there's not a lot of modules that teach you what you should be aware of before you go out and do it. Same with boating, right? You know, if someone wanted to go out and boat, you don't necessarily need a license unless you're going to be a captain with a six pack. And that's, that's a, uh, you know, Dylan's realm, but um the modules of teaching people i think there's even now modules for land-based shark fishing if you're going to intentionally do that fwc has courses that you're required to go through to to do is it you know, some fishermen might roll their eyes and say oh it's going to keep me from fishing but you know what it's it's our responsibility to do the right thing and to take care of our resources and if the matter is a is just offering that education to where it's accessible to people or you know helping the the angler know that they're responsible for knowing these things like knowing what you can keep and how big it is what the aggregate is i know that it a lot changes there's a lot to remember but it is our responsibility taking care of our resources is our responsibility and everybody wants to do the right thing i think as we get the word out and we offer our knowledge and help people as luke was saying we're going to shift that culture and we're going to get to a point where it's just become understood what you should do, but it takes time to build those conversations. And I hope that this is that jumping off point that gets us to where we want to be, where it just, you know, in a short period of time, everybody realizes, yeah, I know what I need to do. These are the steps I need to follow. I know what resources are available to me and fishing is growing rapidly all the time. So it's up to us, you know, and, and more people to be on top of getting that word out. Fishermen love birds. It's a fact. And we love fishing. So, um, guys, super helpful. You guys nailed it. Captain Dylan, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Where can people go follow you and Hubbard's and check hopefully book a, book a trip with you? Yeah, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, uh, the Fish Brain app, Trovo, Twitch, all that good stuff. All your social media. Just look up. Hubbard's Marina, follow us on hubbardsmarina.com. Check out our Sunday night live shows on our Facebook and YouTube channel and Trovo and Twitch. And uh, don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. So hopefully we'll see you out in the water. Love it. Thank you, dude. And uh, thanks, everyone. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. This is uh, it, this is serious. And it is kind of a shame, Justin, to your point that it's it's taken it to, to this level where now we have to really start talking about it and, and educating. We, we should always be doing this. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's un, un, unfortunate that we don't get to talk about conservation as much because everyone, we see the numbers, everyone loves to know where to find the fish and what new lures and, and rigs to use. But uh, this will be an ongoing conversation. And, uh, and we love questions, feedback, or if you've had certain scenarios that you've been in with, with birds or any kind of wildlife 
uh, let us know. We're going to do more and more of this. Obviously, we're not going to go out there and purposely hook a pelican. And there's plenty of videos we'll put in the show notes on, on how to do it the right way on pelicans that have already been hooked. So this is not going to be a, a demo. We're going to go try to recreate for obvious reasons. But we'll put all those videos in the show notes. That's at saltstrong.com in the fishing tips section. And you can just do a search for pelican if you're listening to this or watching this. And it's uh, it's been some time since it was uh, published. So guys, appreciate you and, uh, and appreciate uh, everyone who, who volunteers at all of these peers to help do this the right way and to teach and to show people, hey, if this happens again, here's the exact way to do it. This really is all about education. So thank you all. And we will talk to you on the next episode. Peace. We out. Whoop, whoop.